I'm Dudley Lynch, and this is commentary from Leap Psych, the blog about thinking skills. On a fall day in 1961, the late Dr. Claire W. Graves hurried to a blackboard in his classroom at Union College in Schenectady, New York. Writing as rapidly as he could, he jotted down the solution to issues that had been plaguing his own research and that had long flummoxed most of psychology. Not even the field's greatest theorist had been able to come to agreement on the ideal human mind. As Graves described it years later, his basic realization was this. There is no single way to describe a mature human. The reason is because, in the truest sense, there is no such a thing as a mature human. Maturity is as maturity does. And what the psychologically healthy person does best is to change with the times. That is, keep growing more and more mature. The change always involves substituting new ways to think and behave for old ways. And the substitution may occur, needs to occur in fact, again and again. Human maturation, Graves concluded, is an ever ongoing process. For most of our lives, the healthy psychological journey is calibrated to aim forward, moving toward greater and greater complexity. According to Dr. Graves' research data, Along this journey, our mind veers, oscillates, first toward one philosophical extreme, then reverses itself and moves toward the opposite. That is to say, the ever-maturing human moves from a worldview with expressive individualistic values to a worldview with sacrificial group-oriented values, and then we reverse the process. We do this again and again, back and forth, climbing a spiral staircase of psychological and me mental development for as long as circumstances permit. Now Graves was ready to ask this question. Is it possible to develop a coherent theory and explanation of how we scale up our thinking biologically, psychologically, and sociologically from such improbable beginnings. First, Dr. Graves wanted to be able to explain how the mind changes and when it does what happens to it biologically. He wanted to be able to predict psychologically what new characteristics a changed brain biology will exhibit and how to anticipate them. Finally, sociologically, he wanted to know, in substantial detail, what kind of world each is likely to build for itself, and how the various worlds that humans construct for themselves could both co conflict and cooperate. And he wanted to be able to talk about all this, not in bits and pieces, as most researchers tend to do, tightly focused as they are on their own chosen part of the problem, but in an inclusive, coherent framework. Nor was he finished. He also wanted a system that would equip him to make defensible projections about where the mind be, might be headed next. In summary, he wanted a single scholarly model with a humongous outreach he wanted it one Canadian magazine writer who interviewed him opined a theory of everything. In assembling such a model, Graves gave us an extraordinary roadmap to think about the singular journey of every human who has ever lived. And in addition, the routes taken by the human species as a whole. He did all this at a time when the most serious thinkers, including those in psychology and the rest of the social sciences, still considered the brain to be a, quote, blank slate, 
unquote, a tabula rosa, an empty page, one that has no inherent structure of its own, one that can therefore be inscribed on at will by society or ourselves. In fact, to this very day, a Dr. Steven Pinker, professor of psychology at MIT's Department of Brain and Cognitive Science, has explained in his book, The Blank Slate, most intellectuals still fail to appreciate the extent to which innate qualities of the brain influence the specific content and colors on the pages of the storybook we call our own very personal world. It is of supreme importance because the brain arbitrates everything we know, do, and believe. In the words of Dr. Edward O. Wilson, the brilliant Harvard professor who pioneered in synthesizing the sciences, quote, Everything that we know and can ever know about existence is created there." End quote. Evidence against the brain-mind being a blank slate is now coming from many directions. For example, evolutionary psychology and anthropology are on the trail of a lengthy slate of universal traits that people in all the world cultures have in common. Dr. Pinker and others have a symbol list of more than 300 shared traits. Typically, traits range from childbirth rights to incest taboos to beliefs about death to a hypnotic fear of snakes to repertoires of facial expression for a few basic emotions to the way mothers and humans bond. When every planet arrives on the, when every infant arrives on this planet, its head is already filled with scribblings that Mother Nature has been assembling laboriously for eon upon eon. Claire Graves was correct. The mind brain is no blank slate. In the clever phraseology of renowned zoologist W. D. Hamilton, quote. The tabula of the brain of human nature was never raised. Unquote. And no one before or since has offered us a better theory for explaining the consequence of this than Dr. Graves with his theory of everything. And that's our commentary from Leap Psych. You'll find our blog on finding and mobilizing what needs to come next at braintechnology.com. Thanks for listening.